What's up, everyone? Welcome down to Zetro's Toxic Vault. And as we've been talking to all the players and all the bands from the Bay Area, today's episode is going to be no different. You guys have been asking for this band because I've seen it in the comments, and we're finally bringing him in. From Defiance, Mr. Mike Kaufman. What's up, brother? Thanks for having me, man. Hey, the spider didn't bother you when he came when you came down, did he? No, not too much. All right, good. So, hey, man, I've been doing a bunch of episodes on the show about all the killer times we had back in the day, the decadence of the Bay Area, I guess, the meat, the when when the Bay Area was thriving in the meat, it was the meat and potatoes of metal at that time, right? Right. We go way back, <laughs> going way back. So, um, tell me. When did you start playing music, number one? And what were you listening to as a kid? I mean, you know, I ask everybody this. What, what were, you, were you a Saturday morning cartoon kid? Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, were, you a, uh, were you a horror guy, Bob Wilkins and Creature Features? I always loved horror. I'm a, still a huge See, most fan. metal people are. So I guess that goes with where did you get into uh, uh, to, to metal or, or, or into harder music? Okay, so, uh, you know, I... I Got into Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, when I was probably in the fourth grade. Picked up some... Which was what year, Mike? Uh, let's see, I'm 53. That would have been 1974, maybe? Three? So right basically in, in the pocket, in the apple of it all, when right, it was really right. cooked and hard. Right. I'd never heard of Black Sabbath. I, I got their first two albums, two albums, and I'd never heard anything like that. Changed my whole life. Right. You know, you know like every Me as well. And mine was uh, Zeppelin Four. Oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the stairway to heaven. It was to, to me the to the Absolutely. vocal part and the lead that Jimmy does at the end was something it's that I'd song. never heard in a song before yeah. ever, and I was sold. And yeah. ever since then, I've been heavy. <laughs> I mean, that's Absolutely. the way I look at it, literally. <laughs> but I've, I've 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 always liked the darker side. Were, were you the same way? Did Absolutely. You? I heard the Sabbath album, and I was like, this is. I never heard anything like it. I'm like, this is you know. I wasn't at a point where this is what I want to do. That comes later, but but it was definitely what I liked, you know, what, what I wanted to hear more of. So you're probably 11, 12 years old listening to... Exactly. Listening to Zeppelin and stuff. Were you a Kiss kid? Did you get into Kiss at all? Cause I knew you were going to ask that. Because it's a, it's, it's a normal thing. I mean, you know what this is? And I, I say this. You were either a Kiss kid or kind of a Zeppelin Sabbath kid, you know, I or you can not, be all three, you know. I was not a huge Kiss fan. I liked rock and roll over a lot. Uh huh. Um, I was not one of those Kiss nerds, man. I, really? I, I went to some Kiss shows. Um, I, I wasn't over. really either, but because it was rebellious, hard music, yeah. I, I went with it. I mean, I liked Alice Cooper too, you know. Oh, so yeah, yeah, it was yeah. it was it was theatrical to me. Yeah. So it it was fun to watch. So what now? How old are you before you pick up the bass? Uh, I started playing bass when I was about 15, I think. I actually uh, got in a bad car wreck, and I was laid up for a while, and I had nothing to do. There was a music store down the street. I went down bought a bass. And this is uh, shortly after I saw Metallica for the first time. Where did you see them at for the first it time? It was one of their first shows ever with Exodus and a band called Monolith at... Um, uh, I want to, it starts with an M. I can't remember. The, it's it, This old club, it's not around anymore. It was 1981. Wow. And uh, That's when they first came up here from L.A. It was That's one of their they... first shows ever. I'd Cliff never... wasn't even in the band yet. Oh, it was no, Ron no, McGovern. it was Ron McGovern, yeah. yeah and, 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 and Kirk was in, in... And Kirk was in Exodus, yeah. yeah. And and uh, and I was there, man, and there was hardly anybody there. Sure. And uh, and I was just like, wow. wow. You know, I, that's what I wanted. 38 to do, years you know? ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, some friends of, of mine turned me on. They're like, you got to come see it. It's the fastest band in the world ever. That's how they, they describe Metallica. And, and fastest band you will ever see. That's what they said. And, and all I saw was these two blonde guys up there, you know, uh, or, well, red and blonde, and, and just going off. And I was like, jeez, you know. They did a Seek and Destroy, and I was just blown away, you know. And uh, so I went and I bought a bass, and I just started playing. You know, like is that crazy. the stuff that you were emulating when you were learning to play the bass? What what's tell me? I mean, Absolutely. I mean, was well, it, I mean, yeah. I mean, were you playing like Smoke on the Water, Deep yeah, Purple? Just, Everybody <laughs> has to play. If you that's you got to start with the doom, I, doom, doom, doom. Which, doom, by the way, doom, that bass does not do that. It doesn't, you know? huh? <laughs> but, but, but I would have done it if I was playing bass just because it sounded like, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, that was my first song, and uh, I kind of went on on from there. But I got into uh, to. You know, I barely knew how to play, 
and I mean, moving forward, uh, I started uh, jamming with um, the guys from Defiance in 85. And um, I, I, like I said, I've been playing all that long and uh, I wasn't very good yet, but playing with these guys just got me better. And, um, Talk about putting Defiance together. Okay, so I was at a party uh, with my best friend, Doug Harrington, who is, anyway, he, he ended up being in Defiance later. And uh, we were at this party across the street from Skyline High and there were these two guys there. Uh, Matt Vanner and Brad Bowers, and they were uh, a drummer and a guitar player. And uh, we started talking to them. They said, "Oh, we got a band called Defiance." And um, uh, I was looking for a band, so I started jam with them. And uh, next thing you know, we're playing a party, and the party went over great, you know. And and we just kind of went on from there. And and uh, we played it as an instrumental band the first few times. And um, yeah, because we're you didn't have a singer when we did Bloodbath, right? Right. I right. remember that because uh, Steve didn't come till after a little bit right after that, right? Way after that. No, actually, way after way that, after right? That. Yeah, we had a we had a whole other singer. We had two other singers before Steve, and uh, and we just wanted to play, and we couldn't find a singer anyway, any, anywhere. But you know, our songs were pretty cool, and they were, you know, had a lot of parts, and and people liked it. So we said, "Fuck it," we were bold, you know. What the fuck? So we went out and played instrumental, you know. So now we're gonna we're gonna talk about a very <laughs> famous gig that went down. Um, we um. We just refer to it as Bloodbath, and, um, and it was your show. It was my you show. approached us about it. You uh, rented out the Eagles Hall in That's Oakland? Right. The, re the reason I did that was I, I had some money at the time from the car wreck I was telling you about. I, I got a settlement from it. So I had a couple thousand dollars, and um, I knew Alexis, who was the manager. Right, managed legacy. And I couldn't get a show. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know who to call, so I said, fuck it, you know. I'm going to call Alex and say, hey, I want to do a, a show. And um, I know Alex's attitude was like, I'm just going to ream this guy and take all his money. Probably. Did he? I hope he didn't. Oh, big time. And we've laughed, oh, about, it. We've laughed so about it later on. But you know what? I ended up, I made so much money. It, it was a huge success. It I, was, was it? Because that gig was packed. Oh, my God. And it, the, the, Well, let me, let me get to that. But uh, I rented out the place. We built a stage. And, you know, <clears throat> uh yeah, you saw it. It was way overpacked, and uh, I remember after the show, they, uh, the owners were, were threatening to sue me because of all the damage. And I'm like, well, what about all those kids you were serving alcohol to? And that was the end of that, right? You know, because it was it was because crazy. they made a ton on that oh, that night. Fuck yeah! They, I yeah. mean, yeah, they. I don't know how many kegs of. Well, through. I remember it very well for myself <clears> because um, that was uh, it was Legacy Show, and um, because we were all very tight in the scene, and we all showed up to each other's shows. And James was there that night. And, you know, James had come and seen Legacy before. But James stood and watched me. The, and I felt him looking at me the whole <laughs> fucking time we played. Like, oh, my God. he's like, And he's not like going off and drinking beer or bullshit with somebody. He's just watching what I'm doing, man. And so I was a little nervous. You know what I mean? And I never get nervous. And I've never... People that know me know I perform. I, I, the crowd doesn't bother me. It never has. I, I don't have a problem getting front and up camera or any kind of that. I never really have. But that was kind of a trip. Now, the part that was the capper, Mike, was the guy that was in front of our set. Remember the two tables? I believe they were just like fold-out tables like at a wrestling match, I believe, right? I took that guy to the hospital. Yeah, okay. Uh, he, so he had, I'm going to let you... His hands were like... He had gashes in his head, his arms, all... I mean, we're talking big, gaping wounds. Well, know? because he was banging on the table, and as the fiberglass was breaking, it was creating jagged edges, and he kept banging on the table. Yeah. And, I mean, he was like bleedy... While we were playing in front of this, and he kept going for it, man. So that's the blood. Did, that guy didn't die, did he? I mean, <laughs> no, no, he was fine. I took him. To the was hospital. he on drugs or something? Oh, I mean, he had to have been. You know, because he was just impervious to the pain he was afflicting on himself completely. He must have been in some kind of shock or something. But but uh, it, it was it was. I, I felt so bad for him. Luckily, Kaiser Hospital was just a couple blocks down the street. And I took him to an emergency and dropped him off. He was fine, though. He was talking. He's like, yeah, I guess I went off a little too much. A little bit. <laughs> you know, the, but. The, the floor, <clears throat> when he was done, I mean, it, it was like the, it looked hell. like it was yeah. a murder. Yeah. It looked like b between the mosh pit and the blood all over the floor, looked like there was a fucking murder that went was, on in it there. It was crazy. You yeah. wouldn't have anything like that today. They would not allow that. Man, there would be, 
there would be suing. People would get sued. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Parents would be culling their kids. You know what I mean? There would be all kinds of shit like that. So I never I, saw that guy again. Really? I, yeah. I, I, I remember him. I remember what he looks like. I never saw him again. Hopefully he didn't die. I, I guess we would have found him. out. Yeah, huh? I guess they would have, somebody would have told <laughs> yeah. us. That's what. So when was it? It was, it, you ne- now you're playing gigs around the Bay Area, right? Right. right. But you haven't had a singer yet. When is it that you get Steve finally? We're in 86 now because that bloodbath was 86. Well, we had a, um, our original singer was a guy by the name of Mitch Mays, who we got shortly after that show. Talk about that. I don't okay, remember that. Um, yeah, we, we, he was only in the band for a short time. And, uh, did we, you do a gig with him? Yeah, we did. We played the Rock on Broadway. Um, I remember Paul Bailoff was managing the Rock on Broadway. I remember that. <laughs> And uh, he booked us a couple of shows that did quite well. And uh, we never played, we never uh, got to play with any of the bigger bands. We were just uh, pretty much doing our own shows. But but they did really well. And then um, I remember uh, Doug said something to offend uh, Mitch, and Mitch quit. And uh, shortly after, we got Ken Elkington. Uh-huh. Ken, his brother, Rich Wild, uh, sang for um, Ruffians. Uh-huh. So that's how we were hooked up with him, I think. Uh, I remember Rich. Right, right. And uh, I think Ace Ace Cook uh, hooked us up with with Ken, and that's where that went. And then um, we started doing shows, and, and we we were playing shows like with Laz Rocket. We did that. What uh, year is this in? Where where are we at now? Probably eighty eighty eight. No, it's uh, eighty seven probably. Because what happened was, uh, let's see, I uh, we we did some shows with Ken, and um, I got approached. I, I'm, I guess I'm going to jump ahead here. You uh, can we, go back and go forward. It okay. Make sense. It's okay to do that. Uh, we did a demo with Ken, and uh, that's right. 